Hey guys, Average Joe here, and I am back with the very long-awaited Chulap Dumbbell Teardown. This is an 8552. There is an 8592. It's a larger version with more plates and a longer base, but they are basically the same dumbbell and, as we'll see shortly, share the same internals. The 85 stands for the 8.5 pound starting weight, and the 52 stands for the maximum weight. Before I tear this down, we'll take a look at some of the details of this dumbbell. So it's a 14 inch wide dumbbell, seven and a half inches in diameter with a 1.5 inch grip. I wear a large glove size. That's about the fit for someone with a large size hand. It is not a fixed width dumbbell. It uses telescoping rods. So, much like the Newell Bells over here and the Snodes over here, the width of this dumbbell depends on the weight setting. The telescoping rods extend and retract to pick up or, or leave behind the weights, depending on what you set. It's made of uh, stamped steel plates, cast metal ends, uh, a knurled grip but this is like a sleeve, this is not a solid grip, it's a tube. And then inside there are some plastic components and I'll get into why I don't think that it's an issue with this dumbbell that there are some plastic components inside for the same reasons that I don't think it's an issue with Snowed. And uh, the, the one thing that I found that I really don't like about it, and it's minor, is the strange incrementing. So. The set goes from 8.5 to 52, point, uh, 52 pounds, but it does it in this weird three and four pound and even at one point three and a half pound increments. And it's not even in a pattern. Uh, this pattern doesn't continue to repeat. So, you know, I'm not quite sure why they did that. And TrueLap, if you're listening to the video, I would strongly recommend adjust the thickness and diameter of your plates so that you can get a more traditional two and a half or five pound increment from these dumbbells. The three and four pound increment, it just, it just doesn't make sense to me when compared to what else there is out on the market today. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take apart this handle and we will put the dumbbell aside. One second here. Much like the Snowed, it is a very easy to take apart handle. And in fact, it's a little bit embarrassing for me that I didn't make this video months ago when you see how easy it is to take this thing apart. I would say it's as easy, if not easier, than the Snowed. So it's a very repairable handle. The question is, will TrueLap provide replacement parts if needed? So it's the same question I had for Snowed, and Snowed did reach out and showed me that they can supply those parts. I haven't heard back from TrueLap yet on if they will do the same thing. But I can tell you, it's a very easy to take apart dumbbell. So, let's do that. All you really need is a 2.5 millimeter uh, Allen and a flathead screwdriver. You begin by taking out the four screws for the faceplate. Now, both sides are the same. I'm only going to do the one side. There's really no point in repeating it on the other side and making an even longer video. So we'll take these out. And this faceplate comes right off from just four screws. Okay, so this plate lifts right off. And this is essentially uh, similar to the rest of the plates on the dumbbell. So they basically used the same plate as the other plates to attach to the body of the dumbbell. Now there is this plastic body. And for this, you need to be able to access here where this button is 
to be able to lift this plastic up. Now, I can tell you from taking this off previously that it doesn't always come off so easily. Uh, this happened to come off easily because I had taken it off previously. Normally, you would have to put your screwdriver in here and pry up and then work your way around and pry up on both sides slowly so you don't break the plate. So, on the other side of this plate, we have the button mechanism. And what this does is it's a ring fastened by three screws. And that ring has teeth on the end of it. So when you, when you put this dumbbell in the base, this button gets pushed in. When it gets pushed in, these teeth disengage from the wheel. And that's what allows this wheel to then rotate so that you can change your weights. When you take the dumbbell out of the base, this button then extends to the full position and these teeth lock into the gear and the handle doesn't rotate. One of the most interesting parts of this face are these grooves. These are basically like a cam follower groove, similar to what you'd see on snowed, but implemented differently. And by that, I mean, there are these two wheels. You can see them here. And these wheels rotate, and that's what extends and retracts the telescoping rod. How do they rotate? As you twist the handle, it forces these hemispherical knobs, these nubs. Let me see if I can get a good view of that. It forces those to ride in these grooves. And as they ride in these grooves, they rotate like this. And so that is how you get the extension and retraction of the assembly. Taking this portion out is also relatively easy. Now there's a couple ways that I can attack this. I can either take this entire assembly out or I can begin by taking these wheels out first. I'm going to start by taking the wheels out first. For that, Use your flathead screwdriver, put it under the lip of the wheel, and just pry upward gently. And that takes the wheel out. And you can see this is a two-piece assembly. And uh, the focus on this is not very good at the moment, but uh, it's a two-piece assembly. These are hemispherical nubs, and this is just a simple shaft that sits down in here. And so, as I was describing earlier, you know, this basically rides in this set of grooves here that rotate the wheel as it moves along the grooves. Okay, so there are two of these, one on either side of the rod. We'll take out the other one. And then the rod slides out. It's a cast hollow rod, appears to be aluminum. And, um, uh, and this is it. I mean, they just put hemispherical pockets that match these wheels. As simple as that. Now, on the five, uh, 8552, this only extends out enough to hold those plates, which means that a decent portion of this is still inside to hold it securely in the dumbbell. On the 8592, where you have more plates, this needs to extend out further, which means less of it is held by this assembly 
so that it, you know it's firmly in place. To me, that is uh, a bit of a weakness in the larger version of the dumbbell in the 8592 because you're now extending these rods out closer to their limit, to the furthest out that they can be extended. And that means less of the rod is held in place by the assembly itself. So, you know, on the 8592, if they're using this same shaft length, which they probably are, I would say that at its maximum weight, it's probably going to be a little bit uh, weaker, potentially, uh, you know, more prone to drop damage than the 8552. Okay, so now we have this assembly, which you can grab and pop out like so. Now it has detents here, and I'll show you what that does in a minute here. And it has another gear here as well. And then you can see a series of these nubs, these uh, raised edges along the side of this dumbbell. These raised edges are what engages on this opening here, uh, sorry, here, uh, no, 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 here, that's right, <laughs> uh, here, these raised edges engage the half plate. One moment, and I'll show you this plate. So on the inside of the dumbbell, there is a half plate, and it sits here, and when this is rotated, to certain weight settings, it engages the plate right here. So let me pop this out and you can see, this is how it engages it like that. And that's what locks it in. If you rotate to another setting, comes out, rotate, and it locks it into place. So that's how these half plates are engaged with this mechanism. Okay, so this is just a plastic uh, component, and it, I mean, it seems pretty sturdy. I don't know if it's uh, ABS or what they used with it, but, um, uh, but it seems to be a pretty sturdy part. Inside here, you can now see down there, you can see the other tube, and there is an assembly identical to this. But you can see two wheels here or two gears, small gears. We'll take them out. And these gears are what drives the uh, outer uh, wheel here. That is the numbered wheel. Let me pop this wheel out. And again, this is all with my fingers. But here's your numbered wheel. So you can see here that even though this is the 85 five two which ends here this is actually numbered to go up to 92 so this is numbered for the larger dumbbell this is basically the same gear that would appear in the 8592 now the difference if let me see if i can remember where ah here we go the difference is that this has stops three stops on it so that when this is in here this can only go so far if you watch this here this can only go so far it goes around and it stops it goes around and it stops so i suspect on the 8592 that it doesn't have those stops. My guess is they have a ring like this that doesn't have this and this stop. And that way this thing rotates the full extent for the 8592 version. But otherwise, it's likely the same exact uh, numbering ring that you see here minus those nubs. These two 
ball detents. These are ball detents. They're basically spring-loaded with a little ball bearing. And that is what goes from position to position. That's the click that you hear position to position as you rotate the handle and click through your weights. There is one more piece in here, but I'm not going to try to take it out. And that is the piece that locks this assembly, this, this cast part, onto the tube. It is basically uh, very similar to what you would see on a, on a faucet underneath your sink. It uses what looks to be a specialty wrench that you put on here and thread this off. That's a threaded tube right there. So that is the last piece. And if I had a specialty wrench, I would try threading that off and then take this cast part off of the rest of the handle. And that would be it. So that is it in terms of the uh, assembly. Now, what I'm going to do here is position this. I position this so you can see here. I want these on the same side, okay, for reassembly. But I want to talk a little bit about this. So, uh, basically, when you rotate your grip, you're rotating this assembly. It is, in turn, rotating gears. And this assembly, together as a unit, that is in combination with this, turning these little gears and extending and retracting the tube. So super easy to take this thing apart and put it back together again. Let's reassemble it. We have the 8.5 here. I'm going to put that back where it belongs at the top. I want to just make sure that it is 8.5, okay. Then we're going to take our two smaller gears and pop them into place. And then we are going to take our larger piece and pop that into place. Oh, I should mention here, this has keyed uh, a keyway here. That keyway slides down into the slots on that tube. So that's in place. Now, for this, the trick is to get this to be flush while connected to both of these. There are a number of ways that you can do that. Let me turn this sideways. What I like to do is I basically position this like this, and then I'm going to let it drop into place, okay? So I'm positioning it a little bit raised, letting it drop into place. So I'm going to put this here like this. Like so. Okay. Now you can use this wheel by raising it once again. Okay. To be able to put your other gear on this one and also let it drop into place. So I'm going to put this like that. And let it drop into place. So we have that all back together again. Okay. Now we have our plate. Nothing special about this. This pocket lines up with the groove. Oh, and these holes, of course, have to go down over the raised bosses. Okay. Okay. 
little bit of finagling to get it to work, but we'll get it there. Lastly, our plate, and if I remember correctly, let's see, this one is like this, with the tooth pointing downward in the assembly. Grab our two and a half mil and Basically, put four screws back into the dumbbell. And you can use thread lock. I would recommend thread locking them back in. They probably won't back out. There really isn't any uh, force on these such that they would uh, back out. But, you know, it doesn't hurt. Put a drop of thread lock on the threads before you put them back in. And then we want to check and make sure that we did everything the way that we should do. So these are back together. 8.5, 8.5. We're good to go there. I'll bring the base back up. Pop this handle back in. And we are good to go. So that's it. Um, sorry it took so long for me to, to take this thing apart for you all. I know some of you have been waiting for months for me to do this teardown. And I just, I don't do a lot of YouTube videos, but uh, I'm glad that I finally got around to this. I don't think that the way that this thing is constructed will cause issues of the type that we've seen with Nuo Bell in my other teardown videos. <clears throat> this is repairable. Snowed is repairable. Nuo Bell is not repairable. I haven't figured out a way yet. I've got another handle here. You can see this one's also broken. And I'm going to use it to yet again try to take these things apart without breaking them. It's not a repairable handle as far as I can tell yet. So I do not recommend, I know that there are some folks out there recommending these. Uh, I don't recommend Nuo Bell. They need to fix the durability and the repairability of these handles. At the moment, these are two of the most durable and repairable that I can tell. Uh, I hope to check out some like the MX down the road and see how they compare. But, uh, you know, my overall impression of this so far, and I've had these since last fall, is that they are a fairly durable and also very repairable handle or, or dumbbell. One thing that um, uh, I will say, though, is that <clears throat> I hope that TrueLap does allow us to be able to buy parts if something happens and if you know that we accidentally damage these in a separate video i'm going to talk about the weakness of telescoping rod dumbbell designs whether it's Nuo Bell, true lap or snowed or mx or any of those i want to make a video about what the weakness is the primary weakness of that design i don't think it'll be too much of an issue for many of you you're not dropping your dumbbells you shouldn't drop your dumbbells, but, um, uh, you know, I still want to cover that in a future video. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Have a great day.